Well, thank you for staying with us. In a shocking uh, turn of events, the governorship election petition tribunal sitting in Lafayette Nassau State sacked Governor Ablai Sule of Nassau State and declared David Ambugadu uh, the candidate of the opposition People's Democratic Party as the duly uh, elected governor in a split judgment delivered by the three-member tribunal on Monday. Two of the judges agreed that the election was won by the PDP while the order uh, dissented. Let's hear more on this from TVC correspondent Godwin Aguay. The petitioner seeks the following relief from this honorable tribunal. What? It's a day day for the judgment of the Governorship Election Petition Tribunal holding in Lafayette. Leaders of the All Progressives Congress, APC, and the People's Democratic Party, PDP, alongside their lawyers, make their way into the premises of the tribunal. Delivering each judgment via Zoom, the tribunal declares David Umbugadu as the winner of the March 18 governorship election. It held that Mr. Umbugadu scored the highest lawful votes cast at the polls. The tribunal disclosed further that the incumbent governor, Adlai Sule, was not duly elected by the total number of the vote cast, and the election was not done in line with the electoral law. And the tribunal came to an irresistible conclusion that based on the polling unit results, where elections held successfully, collated successfully, but were wrongly entered into the world results from ECAB, Taking a look at all the results from the polling unit, there is no doubt that Honorable Umbugadu won the election by the majority of lawful vote cast at the election and was declared by the tribunal. But one out of the three member panel gave a dissenting judgment and dismissed the petition filed by the PDP for lacking in merit. The dissenting judgment held that the governor of Nasara State, who is the second respondent, engineer A.A. Sule, is the winner of the March 18th, 2023 governorship election and that he won with uh, 3,799 valid votes. Chairman of both political parties had their views on the outcome of the judgments. We have held back to principle instead of any kind of material reward or inducement that is going on everywhere in this country. We want to appreciate them that they will be honored and their children shall reap from what they have done. Their grandchildren shall reap from what they have done for upholding the truth, at least for once in this state. Uh, the tribunal in uh, split judgment 2 to 1 have given PDP the two judges, but the dissenting judgment was rooted because it, was, it's a, it has expelled everything. The APC and Governor Sully are currently considering an appeal against the judgment of the tribunal. Godwin, Agua, TVC News, Lafia. Well, joining me to discuss this, I have Olain Kaola Daniels and Olushola Jagede. Both are joining me here in the studio. Good evening, gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Let me begin with you, Mr. Ola Daniels. Let's have your take on what really played down there in Nassau State. Did you see the defeat of APC coming? Well, um, I did not see it coming, though. Uh, but uh, one thing about um, 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 court, you can't determine what the outcome of a particular matter or a case may be. You can put up your evidence, you can put up your fact, you can put all that on the table, then it's left for the judges to look at what you have, the evidence, the facts and issues, all the necessary uh, uh, um, um, requirement that needed to be checked. So it's left to them to look at the law, look at the evidence before them, look at the fact of the case, and wrap minds together and come up with the decision. Unfortunately, this particular matter is not a unanimous decision. It's a dissenting, uh, I mean, a split decision mm. where we have a dissenting. Uh, um, it means that 
one of the judges also did his own research, did his own work, and felt no, APC won. I do not see where, I didn't see anything, anything that, that, in fact, he said that the petitioner has not proved his case, that he had nothing before him to show that the petitioner won the case, that the opposition party won the, I mean, I, I mean the case. But here we have two judges that are saying, well, sorry, from the fact before us, evidence before us, well, the opposition actually won this election, was not followed due process, some things were abnormal, some things didn't go the way it should go. So they had come up. So now, it doesn't end there because our law is clear. Mm -hmm. In a situation like that, the parties can decide to say, okay, we need to appeal this case. No, no, this cannot fly. So we'll wait for the appeal. we wait till when they get to the Superior Court and we see the decision of the court on that. Um, Mr. Jagadele, just like he's saying, we are waiting for the judgment of the Supreme Court. But how did you see this whole thing? Like, it's really an interesting one down there in Nassau State. What was your first reaction and the whole split decision and all of that? What can you say? Yes, I, I can say that uh, the, the court decision was not too expected because it was a very close election, one of the closest in the country. The margin of the victory was just about 3,000 votes. And in this particular case, unlike what we had at the presidential tribunal, the petitioner, they brought evidence before the court to show how they won in all those pony boots, one by one. And the judge found those evidence convincing love. The, the, the tribunal, of course, by a split decision. Two of the judges found the evidence convincing enough, and they have to nullify the uh, victory of the APC and the certificate issued to the governor and declare the PDP uh, candidates to be victorious in the election. So to me, I think what has played out in that election is, a, is, about strict, is strictly of what should happen in post-election matters. In the post-election matters, we should be talking about results. We should not even be necessarily be going back, like what they have done in this particular case. It's very impressive. And like some other uh, the, the cases where they have to go back and be bringing some kind of irrelevant issues, this candidate, they went straight to the point and they brought some result that, they, that actually made them victorious in election. Calling me it was rigged, it was forged by the other party and the court found their favor. But let's say I turn out they're uh, on appeal. The court of appeal, they still have a long way to, a long way to go. They are going to the Court of Appeal, they are going to the Supreme Court. But let's see how it turns out whether the, the appellate judges will find those evidence confusing as well. All right, Mr. Olaika. Another very worrisome concern um, some people have raised is the idea of um, the courts making decisions for us in our election. What do you make of this? How far do we, or how often, should we keep allowing the courts to keep making decisions for us? You know, looking at democracy here, the implication of, you know, impending on our democracy. Well, I think we need to start from our constitution. What, what is the provision of the constitution on a matter like this? What is the provision of the Electoral Act on a matter like this? Now, yes, the people, I, I, I share the sentiment of the populace to say, no, Court cannot make decision. Cannot can, can, is now we go to court to declare somebody a governor is uh, someone that is not popular and all that. Well, I share their sentiment. Unfortunately, it can't stop there, and that is the reason why the Electoral Act had made provisions for post-election issues. Because if not, if not for judiciary, a lot of elections. A lot of post-elections uh, uh, result will resort to violence and anarchy. Mm -hmm. People will fight. People will destroy things because some aggrieved party will say, "No, the election was rigged." Da, 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 so da, da. And if you draw the balance, how do thank we you. balance this? Where we have issues, or where people have this fear of um, um, court choosing their leaders for them is when you go to court and you cannot say for a fact this is what the court had come up with as to evidence before them or a good research judgment. Sometimes you hear some judgment and you wonder, where is this coming from? 
How did they arrive at this point? And sometimes you hear some judgment, right? Vividly, where I was somewhere, and then um, uh, the this last our, our presidential um, 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 tribunal um, election tribunal. You listen to the judges. Well researched judgment. Even you, I, I, I was listening and I was laughing and I was asking myself, why did some people just decide to embarrass us as lawyers when judges were teaching lawyers laws? You know. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, at the bench. It's sad. But now, come here. Um, so when you have a well-researched judgment and you hear things, even you are happy that, yes, you are proud of your profession. But when you hear the otherwise, you ask a lot of questions. That is where the populace come to say, come, the court cannot be deciding the winner of an election. But we still have to draw the line. If we take that out, but when you have a situation like this, Let's say elections were rigged. The forms, procedures were not followed. What's supposed to be transposed to the forms were not recorded. And these are the numbers that were rec recorded at some polling unit. Mm -hmm. And we're finding some numbers. So where should they go? The appropriate place, because that is the place for the common man, the hope of the common man. That is where they can, they, they can get fairness. That is where they can get judgment. That is where they can say, OK, I am not robbed. The election is not rigged. So everyone will see clearly. As against, you don't even know where it's coming from, no research, nothing, no judge. You are even you hear the judgment, you can't even pinpoint, you can't say this is the issue, you can't say these are the fact, you can't say these are what they have done so far. That is where the, we have to draw the line. But that we can't go to court. It's there in the Constitution and it's there in the Electoral Act. That is the last place to go as to guide against anarchy, violence in the country. I mean, Jackie, then let me also have your view on this. You also have cases where you see uh, the judges throw away so many cases that they, they consider to be frivolous and all of that. We are also trying to balance the, uh, our democracy uh, equation and all of that. How is this going to be well balanced? How is this going to, we are, are we going to ensure that, okay, it's okay to, you know, take your grievances to the court, you know, to give you your expected results, whatever thing you're looking for. But at the end of the day, uh, courts are being, you know, filled with so many things at the end of the day, shouldn't even come in the first place. I want to have your view on this. Well, there will always be controversies, especially where people are contending over things. And the judges are just those people in the middle that are going to make decisions that must affect one party. They have no means, especially when you are fighting for a one position. They have no means of giving it to two persons. There's no, whoever they give it to must complain. But also, has, you know, also, INEC has been called out in this thing again, like the idea of not doing their job. This is just saying INEC didn't do their job properly. What is also your take on this? INEC now, they are also in a similar position as judges when you look at the uh, position of INEC throughout this uh, period. Now, there will be some things they didn't do right, but their own position is not completely similar to the position of the judges. For instance, in the last election, people were of opinion that INEC promised they would trans uh, transmit results, they didn't do all that, but a lot of people forgot that. INEC actually gave people facility to do that. But the people at the Boni Bulu, they didn't do that. There's no way the man in Abuja could have ensured how that were done. Now, when you come to court, the judges, their evidence and everything, and it's about waiting those evidence that who among these parties have provided sufficient evidence. And in some cases, some instances, they are going to get it wrong. And some, and it's not about, uh, about many times they've gotten it wrong that matter, but those times they've settled controversies and they have gotten it right. And whoever they have ruled against, either, they, either it's a right decision, or a wrong decision, they will always have a grant still want to, to complain. Take it and the worst mistake we've made in our electoral jurisprudence is to have allowed gubernatorial election petition to get to the Supreme Court. It used to be stopped at the Court of Appeal. Mm. They came, there was so much noise. So, the Court of Appeal, there were smaller judges, they were being compromised, and there were, there were a lot of issues. That's why they took it to the Supreme Court. If, if in most states, gubernatorial election, that people complain about so much. Or in the case of, uh, recently, the case of former Senate President, Amelawan, if those cases, they are stopped at the Court of Appeal, 
You know, the, their decision is what decision of what people would have, that, that they actually expected in those decisions. So it means that regardless of any decision the court make, either the court of appeal or the Supreme Court, people will have cause to complain. And that does not mean those people, they are not doing their job.